Well, we moved to Shaman in 1988. Trains looked just like the toy 19th century steam locomotives I had played with as a small child. And it was an adventure to ride them. They were noisy, jerky, and belched black smoke. It only took eight hours to drive from Shaman to Fuzhou, but the train was 15 hours overnight because there was no direct route. We had to first take a train west to Longyan, then catch a train north to Fuzhou. But that was much better than the 1940s. About 15 years ago, I tracked down and interviewed Americans in the U.S. who were in their 90s and in the 1940s had worked in shaman as doctors, teachers, and missionaries. Back then, the shaman to Fuzhou trip took five days by boat, car, and horse cart. Today, it's a three-hour drive or two hours by bullet train. The first time I took a Chinese bullet train, it was so smooth, we literally did not feel it was moving. It was magical. It's like boarding a Star Trek teleportation device in one city and disembarking in another city without even moving between them. Today, China has the world's most extensive highway and railway systems, even in remote Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Tibet. I know because over the past 30-something years, I've driven over about 200,000 kilometers around China. Over the past three decades, I've watched China build trains, highways, water and power sources, and internet and satellite systems that let my Mongolian students' families track their cattle and sheep with their cell phones. It's pretty amazing. The rapid changes remind me of an Englishman in Hong Kong who in 2017 wrote that the major difference between China and the US was not that one was socialist and the other capitalist, but that one was run by engineers and the other was run by lawyers. China still faces many challenges, but so far I think the engineers have done a fairly good job. See you next time.